What's going on, my reefing fam? Arch here, Frag Box TV. Today is going to be a little bit of a different sort of video. A lot of times we talk about corals and fish. What's up, Jonathan? And all these reef related things. Anyways, Tia comes into the store today. Actually, she calls me in a panic this morning, idea, and she says, Come to the store right away. I smell burning, which is not good because we have a lot of salt water here in the store and a lot of electricity and a lot of hardware going on and mixing with salt water and sometimes it can be a recipe for disaster. So today's video is going to look at aquarium wiring and wire management. It is quite important and there's also a safety concern. So anyway, she's walking through the store and she finds, um, if you know the store at all, this is her Fluval Evo here. And as you can see, the AI Prime uh, 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 is not on right now. And if we take a close look at the lens, it's actually burnt. So originally, what we thought was the LEDs burnt into the lens and then it was creating a crappy smell. But that wasn't the entire story. What actually happened was this power supply over here got wet. Oh, this is actually the new one. Hold on, let me show you. Sorry, you got the old one? Yeah. Let me show you the old power supply over here. It got fried from salt creep and didn't catch fire, which is good. Where's the other end of the power thing? Yeah, so very, very unsafe and not caught fire, but melted the plastic. Here's the other end, what it looks like. And that was due to uh, our fault. It was just salt creep building up behind the tank. So the wiring wasn't done terribly well. I will take blame for that. And salt creep often builds up behind aquariums naturally, just the way they run. You get um, what they call salt creep and it's just the salt kind of building up and the power bar was just hanging out over here loose so over time the salt got in there and uh it it burnt the plastic not good it could have been much worse obviously and uh, this as i'm showing you here is also not safe a lot of these wires the way they're running is are not safe so today's project what we're going to do is pull this off the wall and then go and clean up all the wires and electrical tape any connections and kind of make them nice and neat and organized down here in the basement i've done my best to keep the wires organized um, let me show you down here it's still a little bit haphazard it's better than when we first moved to the store it was really bad so what i've done now is put everything inside this cabinet and i it's kind of like organized chaos i i know more or less what's going on but by having them all the wires this is kind of like the brain of the store all in here we avoid any possibility of getting them wet really because this is um, inside this nice enclosed cabinet and as you can see there are most of the plugs that are running the store and power bars but at least they're going to stay nice and dry on the other side of the cabinet this actually is just a kitchen cabinet from ikea that happened to work perfectly they weren't it uh, wasn't very expensive i just cleaned cleared out the bottom to do sort of a little dosing section on the other side of the cabinet is our sump so we have uh, the sump that runs the entire store connected to um, another kind of frag system down here and then all the wiring semi-organized semi-organized goes um, up and then into the cabinet here but most of the connections are in there so there's you know not a large chance of stuff getting wet this is not good what i'm looking at right here you see how i've just plugged that in and what i'd like to do is take electrical tape if you have a connection like this and you know you just end up that way just electrical tape this um, so that in the instance of something getting wet you know you have um, that sort of protection and then across the ceiling with the plumbing hello again what are you, are you guys following me up here i've done my best to sort of manage the cables along the plumbing and using zip ties and keeping it kind of organized you don't want um, a mismatch of wires exactly how we have upstairs one of our grow out systems over here is going to get completely revamped because it's become basically just a disaster of wires i was working on it because something um, was messed up so i was kind of pulling through it and i've made it way worse than it, than it was it's like really exaggerated but this is very very much not safe so what's going to happen here i can do a video after i'm done doing it it's probably going to take me the better half of an afternoon but i'm going to pull everything out from here and i have a custom cabinet little cabinet being built and everything's going to go back in nice and orderly and tidy away from wires and splashing this is very easy for water to come down and you know hit power bars and electrical and you definitely don't want stuff like this sitting on the floor because if you have god forbid a flood 
uh, a seam that get, uh, gives out. You know, I've had a, a fire years ago from a power head like this. It was a Jabal, very powerful, called an RW20. And uh, somehow over the course of the night, it just pointed upwards. And what it did is it started shooting water out of the tank onto the floor to an electrical plug. Just something like that that you wouldn't conceive happening can happen. So be very careful. These things are in your home and you have families and pets and animals in your lives and you just want to do it um, as safe as you possibly can. Usually I put my electrical plugs as far away from the tank as possible. So the power that's running this aquarium is up nice and high so that there's very little chance of any of this large volume of water affecting those plugs. But don't do what I've done. Don't do this mishmash disaster. If your tank looks like that, this is really bad. So let me lead by example. I'm gonna pull all this out and then show you how it can be done um, a little bit better. Oh, you know what? Let me show you the fish system while I'm down here. This is our sump for our captive bred fish system. And so this one I've done a little bit of a better job. Same idea, everything enclosed in this cabinet. So when you open it, it's not, it could be tidier, absolutely. Um, you know, cable management can look sexy if you do it right but at least everything is sort of away and hidden and there's very, very little chance of the water and the moisture from these tanks um, getting into there. I'm doing the same sort of over here. Let's check out this one. So most of our systems have some sort of cabinet with uh, a power bar running the controllers and the pumps and just kind of gives us a place to be somewhat, somewhat tidy, somewhat neat. And you can see they run from the sump into there. I like it above the tank because um, if you have a flood then obviously gravity is going to pull the water to, to the bottom. Same thing over here above the aquarium. Very little chance of that ever getting wet. But I think that's about it for today's video. I am going to show you um, what this looks like after I clean it up. This system is actually going through a complete overhaul. So this will be part of it and then we're adding another farm section over here another seven foot uh, aquarium that's gonna tee into this one but that's a whole nother video and I'm getting sidetracked and ahead of myself but thanks for watching today's episode of Fragbox TV